Hello everybody, this is Havoc and welcome to Norland. This is a game that's a blend of Crusader Kings 3 and RimWorld, and that's at its most basic understanding. There is a lot going on with this game that I very thoroughly enjoy, and having played the demo in the past, I can hardly say that is an exciting time to be able to show you what I'm about to show you. Now this is an extended demo, what we call a preview, provided by Hooded Horse, FYI. I am associated with Hooded Horse, video in the description that kind of lays out what all that means, but regardless, I wanted to mention it right off the bat, not going into much detail beyond it. But what we have here is essentially a 25 in-game days demo of the game, providing updated mechanics, a lot of uh, more content and flavor than what people may have experienced in the demo beforehand. Now, in this playthrough, I am going to do a little bit of a let's play in your typical style. However, I will explain a lot of things as well. It's not going to be like a beginner's guide because this hasn't released yet. This isn't the release version, but I thought that you guys would enjoy kind of some overviews on some new mechanics and things that are happening maybe from the last time that you played. So first and foremost, thank you for showing up today. I hope you enjoy the video. Let's dive right on in. And one of the first things we are going to experience that are different is this screen right here. You start with a family, anytime and always. However, in the past, it's always been two brothers and a wife. However, we have a new set of family member scenarios, basically. We can have a husband, a wife, and a child, two sisters and a son, two brothers, three sisters, or a father and three daughters. Now, this is really good. This allows you to do a little bit of role playing where you couldn't do it beforehand as you were limited. So we could do a husband, a wife, and a child. For instance, fathers and daughters allow us to marry off certain people, which will be really, really great. However, two brothers and a wife gives you one of the best starts uh, simply because, well, you start off with one, a wife, and uh, you're able to kind of start your dynasty a little bit better. We're going to roll with uh, father and daughters. Now, this will be interesting simply because I believe if you marry your daughters off, they actually join their husband's empires, which means that one will either have to not marry all of them or... What we'll have to do is we'll have to uh, hire lords or find ways to adopt lords uh, into our own family. Be an interesting scenario. But one of the cool things also different with this game is our traits and skills. Now, obviously, oh, wow. Okay, so we have three one-year-olds. Oh, good lord. Okay, this is interesting uh, because <laughs> uh, children are not truly represented in the game just yet, as far as I remember. So these do look significantly younger. Ooh, it's going to be an interesting time for us. But Volumil, we're going to go ahead and be a uh, super YouTuber. -y. We're going to name him Havoc. He is 29 years old, has three daughters. And one of the things that we can do is we can choose our uh, culture, essentially. So we have Kaiden, Tanaya, Maka, and Varns. Now, a lot of these have different... Uh, each culture has different values, different things they don't value different cultures that they don't value either, uh, and different knowledge as well. And these are going to be representative as languages. So in other words, if I was Kaiden, I wouldn't be able to get a knowledge book from the Tanaya unless I learned that language. So that's a very interesting scenario. I, I really actually like it a lot because it forces you to kind of be able to pick and choose and be selective on how you want to do things. So we're going to go with the Maka. Oldest civilized people in Norland, created the first cities, etc., etc. Church of the Saint Sophia traditionally views the Maka with suspicion, however, believing that the seed of heresy still lives within their culture. That's fine. That's fine. The reason why I really like the Maka is because we get uh, bonus production to workshops, breweries, and alchemy, and we value trade. So that's what we really want to focus on to be able to make a lot of good stuff. And we have a lot of different things that we can do here, uh, a positive and negatively. We're going to go calm and then we're going to go with early balding. That's a pretty simple baldness factor that I can deal with and we can modify it. You can't really see his head at the moment because we're going to put a big giant beard on him. But we can definitely have some modifications. And then over here, uh, I really don't want... There we go. I just don't want these ladies to look super old even though they're only one year old. Anyway, so now we have an overall skills... This will be very, I'm very intrigued about this because that's going to be a very interesting scenario that we have going on with us. And apparently if you hit the unlimited button, you can do anything without increasing the age of your person. That's not something I want to do, so I got to redo this real quick. All right, so anyways, we have an overview of our overall skills. And of course, this is a blend of everything and anything. We, of course, can't affect the skills here. 
naturally. That's pretty obvious. And so what we're going to do here, we also have a, a nice little trait at the end, which is a culmination of all of our skills. Characters, the ability to convince any enemy king, forget all grievances, and return to a normal level. And now what we get to do is we get to choose our city that we want to be in. Now, naturally, we have some uh, normal, difficult, hard, etc., etc. But each one of these has a different set of resources and a different set of village resources that provides uh, is provided to everyone outside. So, for instance, if we really wanted rye and wood, then crystallite would be a person to trade with, not necessarily, as you can see, uh, be useful otherwise. So what we're going to do, I really like enchantment a lot, but I think we're going to go with Silverhaven. And the reason for Silverhaven is that we are going to have an unholy horde that's going to come after us, and I kind of want to be one of the last ones to survive. So we're going to go down to Silverhaven. We'll see if that would be able to, uh, if we'd be able to support people and things of that nature. We're going to keep with Silverhaven, especially because we have a large amount of mining resources. And then one of the cooler things we can do is we can do uh, any number of different types of signs and stuff for our patterns for our there we go for our flag there we go i rather like this one nice little deer with some nice patterned backgrounds and then we're still not done because now we have game parameters so we start out with a scenario a member of your noble family has been captured by bandits that's the default we can do things like by touch every one of our people are blind we have the hammers way renowned craftsmen of a poor merchants and then just a whole bunch of different scenarios we have faster metabolism we have a trade decline uh, we have the unholy horde crisis, which is what we are going to deal with. And then things like a peaceful mode, hardcore, uh, iron will, etc., etc. All of these are way different than what we've experienced before. So you know what? It's been a little bit. Let's go ahead and get right into the game properly. The beginning of the story. Norland, the year 2898 since the creation of the world. 200 years have passed since the great Crimson Empire perished in the flames of the religious war. Former provinces become the barbaric kingdoms kept from mutual destruction only by the all-powerful Church of the Holy Sophia. While the Holy Prophets speak of the impending end of the world, one of the small kingdoms, a dream of the birth of a new empire, is taking shape. All right, and here is our starting scenario. Now, what we start with is, again, only one person who can do anything, which means we have a lot we have a lot to deal with here. Um, and we can see here, if we were to hover over him, it gives us an overview of his skills, his loyalty, his mood, his uh, culture, and then any thoughts that he has. So right now, Savrina Tsarivna, one of scholars are, she's in captivity. That's one of the scenarios that we started with. And all is well and good. Now, as a brief overview of the systems here, we have all of our resources. We have our current population and the different modifiers therein. We have our matriarch's relationship, so our relationship with the church. We have some uh, things we have to deal with in terms of uh, keeping people happy and satisfied. We have all of our nobles and their various things up here. Again, these kiddos are all one year old each. We have our help section, which is actually really, really thorough. Very thorough indeed. I highly recommend checking it out uh, if, whenever release comes about. We have our kind of uh, things going on in the empire. And then we have all of our different interactions. We have our construction, production. That's going to be things like creating things almost like we do in RimWorld. You have your finances, which involves setting price limits for things within your local settlement. Our finances and stats overall, war-minded things. We don't have a very strong army right now. We have our dynasty in which we can control what they do and don't do. So for instance, we don't want him consuming nectar because it's very addictive. We have our knowledge overall. So for instance, right now, I'm going to go ahead and have, oh, I guess I have to build a library before you can do anything. Right, right, right. So we'll have to worry about that. Different textbooks that we can do based on the different languages. We have our trade, which I haven't still quite figured out yet. And then we have our world map. So we can see kind of the... Um, beginning areas in which we are rolling and rocking. Now, what we're going to do first before we go out and set about rescuing our daughter, we have to get a few different systems put in place. For one, we need a lumber boyo, so that way they can start uh, gathering wood. So we're going to do that. We have a rutabaga and hop field right off the bat, which is awesome. That's a, that's a big significant advantage for us. So we're going to put one. And we are going to go ahead and put a hop field because at the minimum we can trade, even though it takes hops and rye to make alcohol, which we definitely will need. 
we're going to build a couple more things. We're going to go with another dormitory for housing. And I know we're blowing through a lot of our wood right off the bat. But we, there's just some establishments that I need to put in place. We really want a tavern. A tavern is going to give people the ability to purchase alcohol and be happy. And then last, but certainly not least, we are going to put an altar in place. And that's going to allow people to worship and do all sorts of uh, things in that area. There we go. Boom. Now, what's going to happen here is that, one, our people get paid at the beginning of each day. Actually, I think they get paid at the end of each day. Our king, he has orders that he is going to give out to everyone. So he's basically going to say, hey, I need you guys to go do all of these things. Now, one of the other kickers is that for each of the other buildings, like the lumber mill or our fields and stuff, in a minute here, once they get done, you're going to see we're going to have to issue a lord to manage it. And so they give orders once every three days. We go... Ooh. Forest bandits are in our land. Absolutely. Okay. We have to appoint a manager. He's going to get a bonus based on his management skills. And then every three days, he has to give the order to these people to tell them what to do. Now, we only have one lord. And why this is very interesting. We only have one lord, which means he's going to have to manage all of this, which means there's a very high risk that he won't get to all the orders all the time. So it's something we'll have to deal with. And we could do lots of things to worry about that. So right now what we're going to do is we, what is this? Ruark is becoming stronger and plans to annex Dust Valley to his kingdom soon. Where is Wind Peak? Oh, interesting. Okay. So he has a lot of decent troops already. This is interesting that it's coming out right off the bat. So basically he wants reinforcements to counter the army that this guy is bringing him. And he certainly does not have a very strong army at all. Yeah, he only has three units. This guy has quite a bit. He has three. Wow, he has a ton of people. Whereas we don't have a lot of people at all. So what we're going to do anyways, just because I see that threat coming, we're going to hire some warriors. Now we have 2,500 buckaroonies. And I think what we could do is... Yeah, we need to hire a handful of people. That'll work there. What we're going to do right now, though, is rescue our daughter first because we just don't have the people to do anything here with uh, for a larger assault like that. And so what we have here is we can make our king work really well. Apparently, he got renamed again. I'm not going to name him anymore. And then if we just hit warriors, we're going to see that we can make five warriors there and we can equip them. We see that we need lots of armor. Boom. Uh, let's actually do one less bow and one more mace. Now you can see here that five out of five have weapons, only three out of five have armor, and none have shields, but we're going to create them anyways. And then that army is going to have to basically like rally. Are we rallied? Are we ready? Warriors are armed and ready. And we're going to go over to here. Go over to the camp of bandits. We are going to... Uh, we're actually going to attack, and we're going to attack on the local map, and we're going to put Stepanosv, and we're going to send that army. And then what you're going to see is that once these guys, look at them though, I love it. Once these guys exit our city map on the local level, they will pop up here on the world map so we can see exactly what's going on. Very nice. Okay, apparently he's sending his armies to go do something else. And then these guys, yeah, they're definitely definitely going to be an army we need to worry about. There we go. We're already there. Let's go ahead and battle on the world map real quick so you get a really early look into the uh, battle system in this. So we're going to set up here, and the reason why we're going to set up, we're going to protect the archers. And these guys are going to start shoosting. Oof, not quite. Not quite, boyos. And then it's just a simple melee. There we go. This guy took something in the face. Doing a great job, boys. Doing a great job. Make sure he dies. Yeah, we definitely want to make sure that he dies. One dead, two captured. So we actually captured two prisoners. We got our daughter back. The attitude towards the matriarch has gone up because we destroyed a bandit camp. And we got 50 gold and a wee bit of loot, which is really nice. 
I'll take that. And then the work day is over with. We've got a little bit of wood coming in and then everyone's going to get paid. And this is where the, uh, the finances come in. So for instance, we are going to price this a little bit lower. We have plenty of beer. I'm gonna price this a bit lower too. We don't have any meat, so that's nothing I have to I have to worry about. And we can see the daily expenses. We pay our peasants five, we pay our warriors five, and the prisoners get the maximum amount of stuff that we can give them. And so yeah, we don't have a worker or a manager. We've got to put managers at both of these. And then now in the next day, they'll come in and they will do the dirty work. Now a free lord is waiting to be hired. This is great. It means that we can hire him. It's going to cost six, uh, what are these again? Holy rings. Now, we only have 20 holy rings, but we're going to hire him for 10 days. That's going to be a good thing. Sweet. And then we also need to go talk to the trader. So once the Lord gets back from everything that he's doing, boom. All right, so we have quite a bit that we can do here. Now, we could gain some knowledge by purchasing some of this. Uh, language speakers, we actually speak this language if we wanted something for braised rutabaga. Prevents the death from rutabaga typhoid, which is hilarious because if you eat too much uh, rutabaga, uh, <laughs> you, you could potentially get uh, typhoid. And that's a slightly humorous, I'm not going to lie. But anyways, we have lots of options to go with here. Now what we could do is we could purchase a lot of really good weapons. We can see here that the spear is nine times more effective than the dagger. 30% more effective than the mace. However, it's not very durable and reduces an effectiveness against uh, armored opponents. Now, we cannot afford swords because we don't have a good relationship with the matriarch. So that's an interesting thing. But one of the biggest things I want to point out here is that you have something called market saturation, which essentially means that if I were to put too much into the market, the price would then go down after that. And that's not something that we want. We don't want that at all. That's that's very, very bad news bears. So we want to kind of try and hit a balance of everything possible. And so what we're trying to do also, I'm a big fan of equalizing bartering materials. So what, for instance, we could definitely purchase uh, a few spears, I guess two spears, if that's what we wanted. And maybe a tome. Lords will be twice as skilled in using bows. Production of flavorful ale, that's actually really good. And then we couldn't, like, we could do this. All meat consumed generates a positive thought twice as strong. That's really, really good. An herbalist would be great. However, we don't have a level three of knowledge. So uh, it's not something that we could do at the moment. But this isn't too bad of a deal. We are going to have more people in here. So it makes sense. Let's go ahead and send that away. And then one of the last things we are going to buy is we are, or we're going to try and purchase and build. We're going to make a library that allows our Lord to be able to uh, do lots of things and then because we bought this lord or i hired him i guess we can have him go and uh, take over some things for us which i think would be super duper helpful we have lots of prisoners here that we don't want to worry about he's gonna roll away anyways there we go and stepanos he's kind of uh, been a little bit wrecked understandably so he did just fight in a battle he's gonna sleep it off for a little bit and that's the end of our day everyone's gonna go to sleep Everyone's going to sleep on the floor for now because this isn't fully complete yet. And that's a typical day in the neighborhood for the most part. A new day has arisen and it's time to embrace all the things of the world. Now, one of the things that we could do is uh, we could definitely see if there are any... We need to find a, a wife for this lad. And so we need to see... We need to see where he might go about finding someone. Now, one of the, one of the really cool parts about this game is all the things you can do against other empires. For instance, we can see here all the different stuff. We can interact with different lords. We have different politics, inviting to alliances, demanding vassalages, all sorts of stuff. We have trade that we can do. We have dark deeds. I could assassinate a lord. I could kidnap someone, do a, a, a library or a hull robbery. We could threaten to plunder. We could send a guest as well, or we could request assistance. So for instance, in this, in this case, they are saying they are still requesting help. So they have three Lord Swordsman in heavy armor, or no, the, uh, the Wind Peak guy, a level three to five archer without armor. They have two of those and they have three to five spearmen without armor, uh, level three to five spearmen without armor six. So if I took that correctly, that means that they have 11 people in their retinue, in their army. That's quite a lot. That's a, that's a, 
a very decent number of people, I will admit. For instance, we here only have eight once they come in. And so let's go ahead and hire a couple more people. I think that would be good. That puts us at 10. And I do believe we have 10. We don't have 10 sets of goods overall. That's fine. We'll order something in the next time. However, it doesn't look like there's anyone who I could really marry, unfortunately. I do believe Lymia is probably married. We could seduce her. <laughs> Target will lose 50 loyalty, become much more uh, favorable. When it drops below 25, the Lord enters a conflict with the king. It's a regular Lord. They will prefer to leave to a neighboring province, which worsens the relationship. That's actually hilarious. But yeah, unfortunately, there are no uh, ladies to, uh, to marry off to at the moment, which is very unfortunate. We could use a lady because she could also use uh, management skills. So it's all good. We'll get things rocking and rolling, though, no matter what. And it looks like, oh, that's our one-year-old. Okay. Looks like they're having a great grand old conversation. There we go. I like having a heartfelt conversation with my one-year-old daughter. I would imagine it's pretty one-sided because they are a child. Don't know how well that would end up working. And then Iska has comforted Flora. Oh my word, we have two one-year-olds walking around comforting each other. It's so funny. I love this game for, for those reasons exactly because it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, one-year-olds should be able to do all that for sure. Now again, children is something that will be added into the game uh, and you'll be able to see them as children. So that's something that we need to be uh, consider and be mindful of. Now we need rye fields. We are going to have uh, Stepanov's study it because if he doesn't, then I believe we lose that knowledge once we move away or once he moves away, the Lord, uh, Grayland. So we definitely want uh, Stepan in order to work on that. I can't, I can't deal with that name. I'm sorry. Stepan's renamed to Havoc. There we go. And now because we have a tavern, we have the ability for these guys to purchase alcohol. So you're going to see here, we're paying our wages, but then that's kind of our total deficit for the day. But what you're going to start seeing, hopefully, is there we go. People are going to start purchasing their goods for the day. So it's really not that bad of a negative. All right. And then we have a consequence. As a result of the war in the neighboring provinces, migration has increased. The refugees belong to the Tanaya culture. Holy Caravan will sell wood traded by the province two times the price for several days. Okay. So we don't want to buy wood from there. All right. And I was correct. So what I could do, since this guy's being uh, a dingleberry, is I could then, we could threaten to plunder. Or, oh, one of the cool things we also have that I have to mention is that the protection of the loving family, we get uh, kind of a protection that prevents uh, aggression against young noble houses. That's us, basically. The loving family removes that protection when the settlement reaches 50 characters. Uh, and we're at 19 right now, just for for, um, for reference. Or I think we're actually a little bit above. I think we're at 29 characters, excuse me. Now, if we do anything aggressive against them, you can see that the, the protection of the loving family will be removed. So we don't want to do that. But what we're going to do instead is I think we're going to uh, go in and take out this barbarian camp just because we can. And we will get some gold out of it. So I'm all for that. Let's go ahead and wrap Havoc up. And now you can see that our characters... Oh, we just lost a warrior. Dang it. We have eight. So let's get them all in. I thought I bought... I know I bought a couple of uh, spears. And maybe they already took it. I don't know. We're going to create those warriors. We're going to go here. We are going to attack on the local map with my Havoc. And we're going to see how that rolls. They have seven bandits, so it might be a little bit iffy. But I think we'll be okay. Now, as for my army of people. Yep, so it does look like I accidentally kind of like left them. Which is a bit unfortunate, but it's okay. Havoc, we'll, we'll get uh, Rai worried about in a different day. There we go. And so, I don't know what happened here. Not sure. But regardless, what you see here... And this consequences of war is that we got migrants from them because of the conflict. So the idea of migrants and consequences of, of actions in that nature are actually very valid here. And so we did get extra people simply because of the area around us, which is great. That's a really awesome thing to see. I like it a lot. Uh, we're going to go ahead and upgrade this so we get more wood every single day. And then tomorrow they'll harvest rutabaga and they will harvest... Uh, their hops. Unfortunately, we aren't going to be able to get wheat, but it's all good. So we have nine people here. We are going to battle it out on the map and we're going to put ourselves over here. Maybe give us the best advantage for our bowmen. All right. Nope. Let's go in. Let's move in. That's right. The bowmen can do their thing. Their bowmen aren't that great. And it looks like we're actually taking out their bowmen as well. We took a little bit of a, a hit with those arrows. These guys look to be unarmed. 
So we should be able to take them out pretty handily. There we go. Yep. Two of them have surrendered. Please go, go after the archer boy. Go after the archer boy. There we go. He won't last long. There we go. Brilliant. Okay. So we deployed nine. We didn't lose any. We killed three of these guys. We captured four of them. So now we have four prisoners. And we only made out with a little bit of loot. That's not that great. I was expecting a lot more, but that is okay, I suppose. Now, I don't, again, I don't know the result of what happened here. Are they under the vassalage now? I don't think they are, which is good. We don't need that. Here it is, the protection of the loving family. So that's just saying, hey, by the way, that's happening. And now it's the next day as well. And one of the other cool things about this game that I love is there are certain things that do end up costing gold over here. A lot of your decorations and your others, but floors do not. So what we can do is uh, I can just simply kind of make things a little bit nicer in the area. And so that's definitely what we're going to do. We're going to have some nice big paved streets, nice big courtyard area that's going to be all stoned in. Nice little pathways along everything as well. Just to give it a nice, nice air of official, of officialness. Is that, is that technically a word? We're going to let it be a word? I think we're going to let it be a word. There we go. Nice city center. Again, probably shouldn't do all of this, but that's okay. We could put some stuff here in the middle trees and things like that in the near future but anyways what's going to happen now is that uh, we are going to start uh, giving away orders as you can see they're already harvesting we have a great world summary the capital faction of dust valley has been successfully attacked by the army of wind peak but again i don't know that we know what that means and they actually seem to have lost a person in the process that's not all that great all right the king decides it's time to announce the ambitions do we be a conqueror power leads to the prosperity add three vassals to your kingdom do we unify expand your alliance of free cities to three provinces do we be fertile more population increase the population of province by 65 people i think that's what we do or we go economic and have a daily production of goods worth 1500 we definitely don't have that i don't know that we could the 65 is what's kind of i think doable within this extended preview look so i'm all for that the squads returned oh we did get a lot of loot fantastic awesome and we got a lot more prisoners as well which is also great i'll take that i'll take it i'll take it 100 percent. now we do have a lot of unemployed people that's what that six is so what we need to do is probably start adding a couple of uh nice little peasants houses just so we can kind of make them a little bit happier than they would be right now and so those unemployed people are going to go ahead and start building and constructing now i should have started that way earlier in the day it's okay it's all right. It's not going to be that bad of a deal. And we can see here that uh, alcohol allows people to rest. So we can definitely create some alcohol. That would be great. Prisoners are freely escaping. Place daytime patrols at the buildings where they work. Oh, okay. Place nighttime patrols at the entrance to the prison wards where they live. I don't have prison wards. We can buy that book though. Okay, cool. So zoom out to see exactly what buildings they are working on. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's something I didn't know about. So prisoners are actually not currently working anywhere, which is fine. I'm not saying that we need to worry about that, but we definitely could add, oh, okay, this is really cool. We can do automatic uh, production or we can say, hey, prisoners work on this. Oh, that's really good actually. So we could definitely do prisoners for the lumber mill, in which case they work three hours longer. But what we would need to do then is we would need to do a daytime patrol, which I'm trying to remember where that is is it the army it is it's the day patrol nice and then a night patrol for wherever they're at so i think they would just go like right here nope that works awesome beginning of the relationship with the holy church the matriarch of the church of the holy sophia tends or sends you a bishop relationships begin when a bishop arrives at your city population of 40 which i do believe were the capability or the availability of various goods depends on the matriarch's attitude if it are hostile assortments available will decrease and if they fall before 25 they'll oh this oh the trader will stop coming to me completely interesting with friendly relations above 25 you can request a blessing and the availability of goods will expand we're close to that factors that influence the relationships the per, uh, percentage of fanatics among the population let's take a look at that any character can become a fanatic higher chance for unhappy characters and those who have listened to a sermon of faith Fanatics have a constant positive thought and enjoy pain. Okay. They can raise a rebellion. 
They'll be willing to enlist in your army if the king receives a blessing. Fanatics are very concerned that they cannot participate in morning service. All right, cool. That works. Uh, the bishop's attitude towards your king. Spend time together. When a bishop becomes a friend, matriarch will hear about it. Your actions in the world. Pay attention to which actions provide or approval or disapproval. Okay, cool. Holy caravans arrived. Let's go ahead and talk to them again. See if we can't purchase some actual goods this time. And we do have people that are kind of just chilling in the city uh, because they don't have anything. Let's go ahead. We do now have a church tax on the number of warriors. So that's something we have to think about in the future. Now, unfortunately, we do have a great deal of hops. We can go ahead and saturate that market just a little bit. There we go. So we should be able to purchase three of those goods, right? Okay. We do end up getting them. Cool. That works for me. And then this is our Bishop Velomir. Let's go ahead and have a social time. Let's spend some time with him. We're going to have Havoc spend time with him. And we can boost that relationship up. No problemo. And we're getting along with Velomir. That's fantastic. I absolutely love it. And then in terms of our ambitions, we are 63% of our way towards getting 65 people, which is pretty cool. I like that a lot. We also have an economic report. So essentially, we get a, a good balance to see where we're at. So now, for instance, we have a balance of a positive at 154. Do I not have... Let's just do that. I'm not quite sure how to make sure that these guys... Hmm, I'm not sure how we make them do the patrol. I'm not going to lie. Oh, but the night patrol is, is, okay, the night patrol is working. Okay, cool. Great. That's fantastic. So what we need to make sure that we do is we need to make sure that we do have enough space for our army boyos. We need to build them a barracks. How many people will that hold? Can accommodate up to 10 people. Yeah, we're definitely going to do that. We'll make it a little ways away, but they definitely need their own space. I need my warriors to be happy and satisfied with me 100%. All right, it's the dawn of a new day. Welcome, welcome back, everybody. Let's go ahead and build ourselves another lumber mill. I think we're going to kind of build it like over here. There we go. Inspiration. All skills have been increased by five for Iska. Now, again, Iska is, is freaking like two years old. She still can't do anything. Uh, but let's go ahead and we're going to have Grayland educate her because she does seem to have kind of the most promise out of all of them. Definitely, 100%. So that's going to happen. We're going to have some morning prayer time. And I love how it shows all of their thoughts. Now, I don't know what they mean what's whatsoever, but it's at least kind of cool that we have that. All right, what do we got here? We have, we destroyed some bandit camps. Now, there are more bandit camps over here. And one of the interesting things, one of the interesting things is that we could buy uh, slaves off of them. These are actually going to be renamed to prisoners, by the way. But let's go ahead and see, hey, value in the camp is well over 100. How many people are there? Number of bandits, four. We're going to go ahead and do that. Now, as you can see here, we also have a peace treaty offer from Lutosil over here at Starstream. Now, this means that during the period, they cannot raid villages, attack cities, or compel each other to vassalage. All shadow actions are also precluded, and they'll pay for the church's uh, med mediation services. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. So if we click on Starstream, we go down to the proposal of a peace treaty. We're going to enter into that. And we are going to send Grayland for that task. But then what I'm also going to do is I am going to make my army. We're going to get all of our people in. Oh, this is a fanatic, I think. How many weapons do I have? Oh, I have plenty of weapons. 11 is overkill. 100%. There we go. We're going to create those boyos. We're going to go here and we're going to attack these guys again. Because again, it really just helps us with our relationship with our matriarchs. It helps with the matriarch, helps with our guys over here. Only really positive things. The only thing that sucks is that Havoc himself just isn't available to go uh, to give orders and stuff like that. But Grayland's going to do all the good things to here too. There's a new heretic cult in the Northern Woods. It's kind of a beginning inkling of our kind of end game. Oh, nice. And I forgot about this. So we have, uh, they're not vassals, but they're definitely villages under our realm. And so you'll see that they are right here. They're Filstead and Kusia, and they're going to pay tribute. So they are going to bring 60 wood and 96 rutabaga. I'll take it. I'll take it like 100%. That, that works for me. And they will go and worry about all that stuff. Now, I just saw the thing that a prisoner is attempting to escape, and I really don't know where they went. So that's a little unfortunate. Don't know what's happening there. Hopefully they didn't escape, though. I guess because there's no guards here anymore. So that's something we need to think about. I didn't even think about it. Um, 
Okay, that's what we'll do next time. We'll make sure that doesn't happen again. Yeah, it was definitely not necessary to send that many people there. All right, Ludasil is in a difficult relationship with his neighbors from Windpeak. He's planning to start a war soon. It will greatly benefit him if one of the key lords disappears. They're willing to offer 900 buckaroonies for it. Interesting. Uh, I don't know if it will do that right now because it would remove the protection that we have. All right, my beloved friend Havoc, the conclusion of a peace treaty brings me joy. Living in harmony with neighbors has always been my heartfelt aspiration. Nice. All right, cool. All shadow actions against them are, are not going to happen. They just won't. And now we have another free lord available. This is Chris, Krista. No person's available to hire this person. Okay, that sucks. However, maybe we could get in with her. She's only 33 years old. I'm 37. It's a match made in heaven. We need to potentially hire her and then do something to really make her uh, happy with me, basically. Right, we have too many fanatics in the city. But again, there's nothing I can do. No trader. I don't have anyone available to trade with him, which is fine, I guess. It does just kind of suck. And then we have people just kind of chilling out and hanging out over here. Awesome. Now we have a lot of things going on here. We have a barracks now. Oh, we need to we need to definitely get that up and running. We need to get alcohol production as well. That's not super easy to do. Our prisoners are starving. We have a lot of unemployed people as well. We have eight of them. Very unfortunate. We'll try and do what we can. What now? Okay, let's go ahead and fight this. And this should not be a difficult battle at all. Now, the morale's not super high. I don't know if 100 is the maximum. Yep, take the hit. There we go. There we go. Oh, nice. One of their archers is already dead. I like how it bounces off their armor, too. That's super cool. Is he running away? Please take him out. Unfortunately, I can't, like, tell my archers to go after these guys, which kind of sucks. All right, so one is, or two escaped and two were captured. Nice. That's fine. Let's go ahead and come back here. They've entered a sacred peace. That means that during this peace, the parties cannot raid villages. Okay, yeah, that's right. That's what we have going on. I thought this was something they were offering. And I'm like, dude, you just asked me about this. Okay, well, now we have a good relationship with the matriarch. I'll take that anytime and always. We're going to draw just little lines here. Okay, the emperor's dream. Tonight, the last emperor, Maximilian, appeared to me. The loving family has betrayed me. They've strayed from the covenants of Mother Sophia to seize the crimson throne your family my descendants and your destiny is to challenge the church reclaim my castle and establish a new empire but first you must unite norland with pen or sword i found the purpose of our house unite 15 norland provinces under your control either as a king of a vassal state or as the leader of a union of free cities interesting proclaim yourself the new emperor and challenge the church's inquisition to seize the stone of faith and lay claim to the crimson throne all right, well, we're, we're, they, we're, we're close then. Okay, that's a bit bonkers, but I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, morning prayer time, and our boyos will come home. We don't have any orders, so again, that's what I mentioned beforehand. Where is our guy? Is he going to be able to hand out orders? Raylan, you need to go out there and give those orders. Please and thank you. Someone forgot about the things, a paper workshop? Okay, that's a little bit different. Nice. Okay, so those hops are going to be done we are going to appoint i don't want to appoint grayland actually we probably could he only has three and unfortunately that lady went away before we could come back so all right not too shabby overall unfortunately i wasn't able to come back and request a blessing i don't know where he belongs to he's a kaiden what is he he's a heretic oh cruel joke his piety went down <laughs> all right come on back home please <gasps> oh snap gerda Awaits a proposal from suitors. The bride price is 322 buckaroonies. Vito Liub does not treat you well enough. Relationship between your kings is three, but should be at least five. So we can't even trade. I don't want to offer anything to the king. I am not about to do that. We could send an envoy. Likelihood of good and proper position depends on the manner skills. All right, yeah. All right, well, I guess we're not doing anything soon. But regardless, this is really nice. I also don't know how he's able to have two whole... Did he absorb this? I think he did. Oh, they're just allies. Okay. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Or we could go over here. Saveta. Dremel does not treat you well enough. He doesn't treat me well. Well, like, oh, that's dumb. All right. Uh, someone in the camp is selling 10 things, which they stole from Dremel. 175, half the price. If you buy them, action will not go unnoticed. So we definitely don't want to do that. Uh, what do we have over here in our statistics? All right. So our statistics is really cool. Because uh, it shows 
what everything's going on. So for instance, how much we have in store, the production versus the consumption, the local market value as well for all of that and our trade with the Holy Caravan. So that's really, really good. We need to really work on our knowledge. So I may have to kind of keep things. Ah, he left already. That's fine. There's a flesh wolf attack. Oh, snap. We should probably go out and kill that flesh wolf. There's quite a few of them, actually. wonder if I could uh, aim one of them. That would actually be pretty cool. All right, and now we have all the things. Children are not being educated. We should definitely educate them in uh, some philosophy. We'll get Ruark to teach her, although the odds of that really doing anything are low. We need to educate her in... Does she really have any other skills at the moment? She actually has command, so let's educate her in warfare. And we'll have Graylin do that as well. Now what we need, prisoners are starving. I don't really know what to do with that. Verify you've allocated an adequate number of, amount of food. Prison ward. A living space for all prisoners. Inside there's an altar. Requires a warden worker. I don't have that. So unfortunately my prisoners are just going to have to continue starving. Unless I can figure out a way to make it work. Alright, Sigbert. Do we really need to hire another lord? He's got great command and combat skills. I'd actually kind of be okay with that. Now, what we need to also pay attention to is that uh, our king and everyone really actually has a mood, a mood factor. So apparently, uh, Holy Sophia has forsaken him. I don't really need, I don't think that's, we need to build a temple, obviously, but outside of that, it's whatever. I must do it at all costs. Reason is a desire. Expires in 35 hours. I really need to get in good with someone. Uh, you know what? We could, there's six bandits here. How much would it cost to hire? Oh, 12? Oh, we only have 13. That's not going to work. I can't do that. So what we're going to do yet again, I assume that Havoc has given out issues for the day. There we go. What is the result? Uh, what is the current status of our people? King of another culture. They have some mild hunger. Let's wait for a day. But we're going to go and take that bandit camp out, I think, and, and make it work for us. So Graylin started doing the task of education. It's time for the Lord to marry. I know. I would, I would love to. I understand that wholeheartedly. Uh, we're not going to do a blessing right now. Let's spend some time. Uh, no, let's go with Velomir. Uh-oh, what's going on? Hold on. We are going to spend time with him. All right. Appearance of the Unholy Horde. The Inquisition mission has returned with dire news. The Northwestern Force, so-called Unholy Horde, is formed. Union of Forest Tribes under the rule of the Dead God. King who brings the capital of the Unholy Horde to ashes will earn the gratitude of the entire world. Okay. And now we also have an alliance proposal. Okie dokie. Noble houses promise to help each other if either is attacked. Warfare, uh, shady actions, and intrigue are excluded. Alliance members can enter into trade contracts without restrictions and the market volume increases. Members of an alliance cannot have vassals. Members of an alliance of cities cannot have vassals. So I couldn't vassalize anyone. That's a pretty big ask for me. And it looks like this dude potentially is going to raid... Rautal, which is probably why he's doing that. Hmm. I think we'll be good for now, unfortunately. You're just going to have to chill. I do think that these people are wanting to start to uh, get a little bit more battle-hardened. But honestly, uh, Havoc just needs to needs to start studying is what needs to happen. Or we'll have, we'll know, because Graylin leaves. Havoc's got to do that. Like, he's just got to spend some time. Learn, lad, after your your thing with the uh, Villainer. Villainer, excuse me. Yeah, we do need to find a suitable bride for sure. But one thing we have to do is we have to get alcohol consumption ready and rumbling. So we have to have rye fields in order to do that. So I really need Havoc to go study. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Finally. All right, the Holy Caravan has entered the city. We're going to go chat with him, see what we can't grab. All right, we owe 549. Are you kidding me? Holy crap. All right, we're going to try and offset that just a little bit. We have lots of rutabaga. There we go. That's not too bad. Uh, that's not too bad at all, actually. Uh, however, what do we want in return? Now, we could use some shields. I think that would actually be a pretty good deal. But I think what we are going to do is we are going to purchase a good deal. Holy crap. That's a lot of dough for a little bit. Nope, we're not going to make that back. So that's not worth it. But at the same time, like I don't really want to do shields either. Let's see. We have more than enough of that stuff. I can't get armor. We'll get shields. That way our people can be even more successful against them. But yeah, we gotta we really have to have Havoc start working. Please get Ryfields up and running. 
There we go. We now can make rye fields. Thank the holy lord. We're going to do that right there. And then we do have a brewery and a mill. We are going to work on alcohol production first. First and foremost, because I think that's what we will uh, need the most. So we are just going to put this guy right there. And now what we'll see happening, you know what? Let's actually, these fields are so much. Rutabaga is cheap, but hops and rye is not. We're going to let it happen. We're going to, you can already appoint a manager. Great. Wouldn't have them do that. They're going to start sowing. And doing all that stuff these guys are going to be able to allow us to make alcohol and we want to again do that before i think flour actually no forget this what we're going to do we're going to make two two rye fields so that way we can do both because we, we desperately need to do both like it's not really a one or the other thing it needs to be both of them so we're going to have them make a mill right next to the brewery and then that'll be good and then that'll also allow us to you know have uh that'll really allow us to be able to reduce that employment which reduces that stuff so that's all well and good i'm actually very sufficiently happy with this now we are going to kind of overload havoc again we do need to get a wife the desires become even stronger i get it i get it believe me so what we're going to do we are going to have havoc uh no we're not going to hire any more people sorry i did the wrong thing we're going to do seven people we're going to create that army we're going to let that army and then we are going to go and we are going to liberate this place. There they go. And now what we have to kind of wrap up the end of this video today is we have production. So now we can say, hey, we need to do until we have, uh, we'll say, we'll say 50, right? And then beer, we'll say until we have 50 as well. So essentially we're going to need 74 rye and 24 hops. Uh, we'll do we'll do 70 beer. So now they will kind of have their production. Okay, I won't do this or I will do this until I hit this number amount. So that's going to be really good for us overall. I'm very satisfied with that. Braylon's in depression. The prisoners are still starving. And we still need to marry, marry off. Rumors have it that Lord Kamina is planning to leave his noble house is waiting invitations. You can intervene by offering him to join your noble house, but this will worsen your relationship. No, we don't want to do that. What we are wanting to do is is get this guy's relationship well enough with us to marry her off to us so we can have another lord and yes that is my sole motivation maybe to have children but we have three we have three it's fine all right and we're here now it's not giving us like super great odds but again i mean we are armored one of our dudes is shielded that would be our main boyo and like i just don't see how that could end negatively i'm not gonna lie like as long as we don't get hit we should be good. And it looks like our archers are much more proficient than they are. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Is he dead? Or is he just knocked out? Come on, boyos. Fly those arrows true. Take him out. Take him out. Mm, yeah, I really wish we could say focus on the archers or do something like that. Because that would be super duper helpful. There we go. Take him out. Oh, it looks like he was disarmed. No. Man, these guys are a little bit, a uh, little bit testy. Hopefully we didn't just lose three people. All right, cool. Well, that's, we did lose one. Okay, that sucks. We did capture five of them. One of them's dead though. Nice. We're going to head home. And now, yes, brilliant. Okay, so we got to get home and then be able to go after. Sweet. We may have ourselves a wife. All right, so one of the last actions I want to do for this, we are going to get our marriage to Havoc initiated. And I assume that means I will leave. Yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end the, the uh, to today's episode. Wow, words are difficult. With that right there, Havoc's going to go get himself a lady. Fulfill our sexual with desire and hopefully remove that obsession of desire. And unfortunately, I didn't think about giving the orders first and realize how early in the day it was. That's fine. We'll make it work somehow one way or the other. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this preview look into Norland. I'm having a blast with it. I can't wait to see what else happens in the future. So if you do enjoy it, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications but also leave your comments in the comment section below. Greenland has a strong desire within themselves. Oh no. 
And, oh, there we go. Become the wife and will soon arrive in your city. Very cool. Awesome. We are married, which means she will have a lot of things going for us. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. This is Havoc. I'll see you in the next one.